So this is my submission for the final project, uh, Artificial Intelligence uh, Summer Semester 2022. Uh, the topic is on concave hole detection. So concave hole is an extension of convex hole, or rather the convex hole is a subcategory of all holes. What convex means, I have an image down here. So this is a, an example of a convex hole. We have a set of points. And we want to find the smallest polygon that will enclose all of the points. And there's a convex limitation, which says that none of these internal angles can be more than 180 degrees. Like we couldn't have a line. This could never be part of the polygon because then the shape is no longer concave, or sorry, shape would no longer be convex. In the concave hole example, uh, we do allow for those for uh, internal angles greater than 180. Uh, so we get uh, uh, outlines which more closely hug the cluster of points. So that's the, the overall goal. The spin that I've taken in uh, this pr this specific approach is um, uh, that it's being done with a uh, with convolutional operations. So here's the kernel itself. This is the convolutional kernel, which uh, which allows us to to uh, to apply this algorithm and I'll open up a Microsoft Paint here to show the general idea. Uh, so here's our cluster of points. Imagine we had like a rod sticking out of one of the points, right? And this could rotate around the points like this, right? Well, let's say it rotates and as soon as it hits another point, we slide it down and we continue rotating in the same direction. Right. Every time we hit a point, we slide it down and continue rotating. It's like we probably barely missed that, but uh, we'll go with it. We'll say, yeah, we missed that. Continue rotating. This time we hit it. That's interesting. I uh, hit this one. And um, th I mean, this is sloppy. It's just for demonstration purposes. Right, and eventually we wind up right back where we started and we say, great, that's a complete cycle, job done. So our list of polygons is the list of points that we visited from start to finish. So this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, I think it was this one next, then this, then this, this, this. Oh, so let's draw that out. All right, that's our hole, and uh, we skipped one. So that's the algorithm. That's what we're trying to do. Um, some nice qualities about this strategy. The fact that we're using convolution means that it could theoretically be offloaded to a GPU, so that could make it pretty fast. And there's also this idea that we don't actually need to visit the the points in the center at all. Like uh, that algorithm um, completely skipped this. It, the, the, the whole algorithm didn't didn't even notice that this pixel existed. Uh, so there's the potential to have um, better growth because it's not so dependent on um, the number of points. It doesn't have to visit every point. So that's nice. Um, and that's about it. Uh, there's a number of like weird things that can happen though with this strategy. Like say for example, the, um, the 
rod is too small and up here is a pretty good place to show that like all right we missed that top one go down rotate go over here go up to this one we rotate again and then we hit the same point twice so uh, the the shape would just have this or the the ending polygon would just have that line kind of sticking out of it and that's pretty weird um, with that rod length we'd never be able to get to those but uh, I think you get the idea this this one protrusion that's not really something we want in our our hulls so that's just one of the weird things that can happen uh, there's also like infinite loops where you get kind of stuck in a mini cycle um, and uh, well it's the algorithm is working it found a cycle it's just found the cycle that you didn't want so you could have a scenario where this algorithm just finds you know this and says yeah there's there's the hole but it completely ignored everything else so these are all things that need to be addressed at some point, but uh, they have not yet been addressed. The solution is just to make sure that uh, the length of the rod is sufficiently large, and that's easy enough to change. So now we'll go on to the notebook, show the algorithm at work. So this cell here, this is just uh, a bunch of utility functions designed to um, to create this kernel uh, so yeah this is this is like where the rod is at time zero and then as it's rotating time is going by eventually it's going to wrap back around on itself and the fading is uh, analogous to the passage of time Uh, so th that's what all this is for. Uh, this just makes the initial kernel, and then this will rotate it. And rotating it uh, is a lot easier than making it from scratch because it's just um, it's just a matter of adding the angle to it, and then correcting for the scenarios where it, the the value increases above, you know, two pi or decreases below zero. Um, we want to keep everything in terms of like zero to pi or zero to 360 degrees. That's how, uh, that's the only way you can make this uh, kernel work the way we're, we're trying to make it work. Um, but even with that, it's a very simple algorithm. It's just adding and then um, adding and subtracting a number to that matrix. Uh, so here is example of a kernel, uh, a little bit higher res. Um, and here we rotate it by pi over 8. Yeah, uh, pi over 4 is better. It's 45 degrees. So we'll rotate it by 45 degrees and draw it again. And bam. It's rotated by 45 degrees. Continue doing this, and it goes around full circle. There you go. That's uh, how the rotation works. Um, and now we'll just get on to an example. Uh, so this is a larger grid. We're going to start with the smaller grid first. So 300 by 300 pixels. This is the shape. It's in the shape of an F, like a sideways F. Um, we're going to extract that into a list of points so every one of these bright pixels turns into an XY coordinate um, point. And then the length of this list is right about 900. Uh, so our algorithm just goes through that basic, the basic motion that I went through here. Um, and 
in order to you know correct for these weird uh, you know sub cycles where you might temporarily break out into some other almost enclosed cycle and then get back to where you started back on the main loop um, well this this point here uh, would be visited twice right we visit it once here we go up and then we visit it a second time so in order to not immediately halt iteration at this point we say we need at least like five hits before we say yeah we've definitely reached a cycle here uh, there's certainly better ways to do this but uh, this is seems to be sufficient for uh, for a first pass. That's really about it. Um, yeah. Uh, there's uh, you can go into the math, or we could go we could go into the math, but it's not particularly interesting. Uh, it's pretty simple, just geometry stuff. Uh, so here I'm importing um, an algorithm called Alpha Shape. And it, it's implemented in, um, as a GitHub repository. I don't know much about the implementation, but um, it seems to be fairly highly upvoted. And it was the first result for a concave hole in Python. So, so that's that's what that is. That's what I'm using as the um, the baseline in terms of performance. So here's the algorithm made here and we see looks like we hit one of those weird uh, nodes. So first thing I'm going to try is increase this to like 10 because 5 is actually pretty low. And that didn't seem to help. Um, next is to increase the rod length and that seemed to help a bit. So keep going maybe 25 may have been a little bit too far three try going down to 10 yeah 10 actually is one of the better ones so yeah very sporadic and unpredictable um, and that's not a great quality but it is ridiculously fast so I'll keep it at 10 I kind of like that uh, now for the alpha shape. Oh, here's here's an interesting spot. Yeah, it's still messed up a bit, but generally speaking, it's not a terrible shape. I really just want to get that better. 13, is not playing very nicely. All right, we'll stick with 10 here. Uh, and then the alpha shape, yeah, much cleaner. I generally get better results here, but as we know, it's not consistent. Um, but the, the Planck algorithm did uh, a whole lot better, um, an order of magnitude faster than uh, the traditional alpha shape algorithm, uh, but what it really where it really shines is um, is at large values of the n uh, because it, it, the algorithm just flat out ignores all this stuff in the center, um, or at least the difficult part of the algorithm does. It's still technically log uh, n log n because there's a sorting operation. Uh, somewhere in here we sort. Uh, yeah, we find the min. So actually this is just n, not n log n. There's no sorting, we just find the min. Um, right, so that's our new image. 
Uh, here are new points, it's 14,000 points. And we'll go again. That is not good. It's better. That's pretty good. So 0 0.05 seconds for Planky and right about three seconds for alpha shape. Um, so there it is. Uh, pretty simplistic idea and it actually turns out to be quite fast. That's it. Thank you.